In this video, we're going to be covering the management and creation of invoices within Recorder Suite. So on the dashboard, you'll notice that we've got our invoiced, paid, and total due statistics. Now also within recent activity, the default selected tab is invoices. And from here, you can see invoices that have a balance are listed in red, and those that don't are listed in green. Right from the dashboard, we can uh, view, edit, or delete invoices. But let's head over to the invoices section itself. So once here, we've got an immense amount of filtering and sorting capabilities that allow us to quickly view uh, pertinent information related to invoices uh, and also their status regarding balances and things like that. So up at the top here, any of these categories can be sorted by clicking the column header. So for instance, if I wanted to see the latest uh, invoices that were created, I can simply sort by date. I can also sort by type. In this case, this is a federal account, so the majority of the invoices will be federal. However, if I proofread on the side or something like that, I can select proofreading and scoping, uh, state and freelance based invoices, I can select that as well. And again, you're not going to see those here because this is a federal based testing account. So if I click on federal, um, any of these rows can be clicked on to view uh, detailed information. So for instance, if I wanted to see the details on this invoice uh, to Marie Maddox, I can click on this and see all of the various information that, that you would find uh, within an invoice that has been entered. So up at the top here we've got an array of options. Uh, the first one is edit, which of course will allow you to edit the invoice. I'll go ahead and click on that and we'll see all the fields that are associated with an invoice including customer, general billing information, uh, the rates, uh, the page counts, any deposits or uh, miscellaneous charges that, that need to be applied. I'll go ahead and cancel so we can get back to the invoice section and I'll expand this again. Uh, we have the ability to copy an invoice and when you copy an invoice uh, the general information is carried over so that you don't have to type in uh, all of the uh, case details and things like that. Essentially this allows you to select a customer a different customer uh, and, and create a new invoice based on the original invoice. Uh, we can also view the invoice and this is the view that the uh, customer would see if you were to send this invoice to them from within Reporter Suite or send them a link uh, directly to the invoice yourself. We're going to cover the sending and invoice options as far as printing and PDF creation uh, here in a minute. But let's go back to this screen. We can also copy the link and what copy link does, if I click that, you'll see a little notification that says copied to clipboard. This allows you to uh, send a link to an invoice uh, by email if you wanted to send it yourself. So as soon as I click that, we got that little notification and this is just an empty text file, but this could be a Word document, a new email, anything. So I can either right click and paste or on PC, control V, on a Mac, command V. And this link is a permanent link to this particular invoice. So if a change is made on the invoice and the attorney or firm uh, or reporting firm has the uh, a link to this invoice, they can just visit it again, generate a new PDF if they'd like. And in the case of payment processing, if you have your Stripe account set up, the invoice can be paid right from this invoice link directly. So I'll move this out of the way and I'll go ahead and paste this in the browser. Uh, and there's the invoice. Now this invoice has been paid in full, so we'll see the little notification here at any time. Uh, a PDF can be downloaded uh, or the invoice can be printed uh, for record keeping purposes. But as mentioned before, this link is permanent. So you don't have to worry about um, sending updated invoices. Uh, you can just uh, have the attorney or customer in general uh, visit the link again if updates are needed to be made on it. So back within here, you'll also notice this copy for Catalyst. If you're running Case Catalyst 18.5 or greater, if you're familiar with the finishing process, this copy for Catalyst button, once clicked, copies the invoice ID itself to the clipboard. Now, within Catalyst, if you expand your finishing uh, dialog box, you'll notice a new input field called Reporter Suite Invoice ID. If you then paste this ID, and allow Catalyst to package uh, your transcripts and then generate the email that's sent to your customer, you'll notice that a link directly to this invoice has been inserted into that email for you. So you don't have to go back to Reporter Suite to get the link. Uh, it's right there within Catalyst, which is extremely convenient. And of course, there's an option to delete. If I click on delete, it's going to ask me if I want to 
uh, confirm the deletion. I'm going to go ahead and cancel because I'm not going to delete this. Uh, but let's go ahead and create a new invoice from scratch. Now up at the top, there's a handful of buttons here. Uh, the first one being export, which if I click on this, it'll allow you to export your invoice information in CSV format for importing into Quicken or Excel or just for general backup record keeping purposes. I'll go ahead and cancel. Uh, payment settings will allow us to adjust our global rates. So for instance, if I needed to adjust my ordinary uh, page rate, I can do that. So then when I create an invoice and assign a page count, that total is automatically calculated for me. I can go into my invoice templates and specify which fields are visible when I create an invoice and ultimately when a customer views an invoice. And then of course I can manage customers. Now there's a few ways to create customers. You can do it right within the customer screen uh, or you can do it while you're creating an invoice. And we've got separate videos for uh, that cover invoicing templates and, and customer creation and things like that. So we're going to go right ahead and go ahead and create an invoice. So I'll click on create invoice. And the first thing that we're going to do is select the invoice type. In this case, I'll just leave it as federal. Uh, the invoice number is automatically generated and automatically incremented. You can override this at any time. You'll notice I could type uh, a new invoice number in here if I wanted to, although if you leave it alone, uh, these will automatically be tracked and incremented for you. Uh, in this case, because it's a federal invoice, we'll have all of the AO recommended fields. Uh, and if I scroll down here, um, you'll see the dates regarding timing, uh, various case details. In this case, the recipient type is official. It's a criminal case. If I scroll down some more, you'll see where we can select uh, or specify customer details. Now, from right here, if I hadn't created the customer yet, I could go ahead and create them from here, and I'll open this to show you. You'll notice that we've, we're presented with a new uh, contextual window to go ahead and create the new customer, be it an attorney or a firm. I'll cancel this, but in this case I already have a firm that I want to go ahead and associate this invoice to. So I'm going to go ahead and start typing in uh, Ellen because I have a, uh, a testing firm that I can go ahead and use for this demonstration. So here's Ellen Legal. I'll go ahead and click on that and then the next thing it's going to ask me is which attorney at that firm. Now when creating an attorney, part of the customer creation process for attorneys is to ask you uh, is this attorney part of a firm? And if yes, you go ahead and select the firm that they're associated with. Because I've already done that, it's going to ask me to go ahead and select the attorney. And in this case, we've got Robin. Uh, so I'll go ahead and select Robin, and you'll notice that the contact information is automatically populated. Um, the, the rest of the customer detail information uh, can essentially be left alone because we've got everything that we need. You'll also notice that the email gets populated. If there was an email address associated with the customer, um, then we have the ability to actually uh, deliver this, this invoice over, over email. And I'll show you how that works here in a second. So if we scroll down a little bit, we'll see our page rates. Uh, and because we set them in our general settings section, they're automatically here. So if I were to enter uh, 95 pages, of ordinary original we'll get our subtotal scroll down as mentioned uh, in the the original demo video these page rates can be overridden at any time so for instance if I needed in this case to drop this down to three dollars per page we can see that the subtotals automatically uh, automatically update and I'll just leave that there for now so I'll keep scrolling down if there's uh, any kind of discounts or a deposit that was applicable in this case we'll say maybe a fifty dollar deposit was applied and we got the check uh, the 17th and I'll enter a check check number uh, the balance will be updated accordingly and I'll go ahead and create this invoice now the moment we create that invoice we're going to be taken back to the invoices section and we can see our invoice here and now if I click on that invoice here is all the high-level information you'll notice that we get the email address populated here so we can go ahead and send it so if everything looks correct, we can go ahead and send this invoice. The invoice link will be sent to the email address we have on file. If payment processing is set up, if that invoice is paid, your uh, balance will be reflected automatically, which then feeds uh, not only the invoice section, but also the dashboard and ultimately your reports. Um, one, thing, one thing worth, worth mentioning is if, you're, if you'd rather uh, simply download a PDF and deliver it by email or print it and mail it, you can do that as well. So if I go ahead and click on View Invoice, 
You may recognize these buttons from when we were viewing a little earlier. I can simply download the PDF or I can print the print the invoice if necessary. So there's multiple ways to, to hand, handle the um, the uh, sending of an invoice within Reporter Suite. It's, it's really about what you're most comfortable with. From an efficiency standpoint, if it's sent electronically, uh, you have an easy way to update invoice information without having to physically send another invoice. And then, as mentioned before, with payment processing built in, the attorney or firm uh, can click on pay this invoice and be presented with credit card fields to immediately pay the invoice, in which case, uh, as mentioned, the balance uh, is automatically updated back on Reporter Suite and uh, the funds are deposited within your account within 72 hours. Uh, the account you your, the checking account you specify when uh, setting up your your Stripe account, which we cover in payment processing video, in addition to the settings video. So that gives you kind of a high level overview of the invoice creation and work workflow process. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us at info@reportersuite.com. At Thanks for watching.